That's you love know? right there. And it's I love always that. It's like a great thing when you got somebody of that level and that stature to not just back you, but support you in any type of way. Yeah. Bro, retreat. Shout out to 50, man. Shout out to 50 Cent, yeah. man. That's dope, bro. He's smart. A lot of things been going on um, these past couple of weeks. I know you've been seeing this going on. How do you feel like a lot of the young guys dying R.I.P. to uh, Rich Homie Kwan? Rich, Rich Homie Kwan died, died tonight. And I know on our path and when we were younger coming up, you know, the music was going which in every way. A lot of people were doing things, but it wasn't a lot of overdose. What's your perspective on it now, nowadays, opposed to, you know, me back in the day as far as the music, as far as the drug, as far as the scene, as far as the culture? Well, I I knew Rich Homie Kwan back in the day. I was I was doing a circuit on the East Coast doing radio tours, mm -hmm. and so I was in uh, DTLR in Baltimore, and DTLR. I was working with the Me the Migos. Yep, oh, yep. Dope. And um, you know they have a radio DC station. They used to be down in DC. They had the, the a DJ was running that. Mm -hmm. what, what was his name? Um, so many years ago, yeah, right? Years. You know, I know, know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. I ran that circuit too when I was doing music. Yeah, and then uh, what's the the ninety uh, the ninety two rap attack? Um, it was it was a lot. So I ran into Rich Homie Quan, and it was so funny because. Like he was just such a, a good spirited person and I'm gonna I'm get to a point with that, but he's such a good spirited person. Like it was like, it didn't matter if he knew me or not. He was like, oh wait, hold up. I just seen you perform. You, you nice. Right. That's, let me, let me dope. speak life that's into you. And so um, with him being sober, I actually lost well, with me being sober. Cause I've been sober for three years now. Amazing. I lost my best friend. He was like my brother. He, um, he, Okay. Um, so I lost, he taught me everything I knew about music. And he died because he used to drink a lot. And one day he came home and he was leaned over and he threw up and like aspirated, like choked on his own vomit. Yeah. This is the person that taught me everything I know about music. I'm sorry to hear that. His music lives on, <laughs> you know, his music lives on and uh, planted a tree for him. It grows. It's amazing. And so um, for him um, with this kid. Right. And so this this again, teach his own, teach his own. But this is why I stopped drinking, because after he passed away, I realized that Asia, um, the spirit, the spirit that you have within you, you got to nourish it. You got to nourish it and you don't know where you're going, but wherever God is about to take you, you need to make sure that you are at 100 percent now. It ain't got nothing to do with y'all, whatever. But for me, I'm a diabetic. You know what I mean? I used to drink excessively. Like for me, I used to drink very, very like it'd be like, oh, I'm in a bottle, another bottle and I don't feel nothing. So said, That's a problem. Mm -hmm. If bottle, bottle, bottle and I don't feel nothing until I get home on the front lawn in the grass. Yeah. Like that's my story. You're a beast. You know, no, but you for a, real, a drinker, drinker. You know, we weekend warrior. No, I, well, I used to, I used to smoke. I used to smoke, so it used to level me out, and right. I used to like maintain this like image of who people wanted me to be. But mm -hmm. when the lights were off, it was like this is who I have to sit with. Like I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Like who are you? When my friend died, it broke me. I screamed at the top of my lungs and it broke me. Yeah. And I said, Asia, if you don't, that happened to me one time. I was like throwing up, you know what I mean? Oh, choking, throwing up. It happened to me. It was like, they were trying to help me, but I was like, that happened to me one time. Mm. And I could have just, out of God's grace, I was still alive. But you know, when that happened to him, it woke me up. How did the mind uh, set shift at that, at that point? It, it, it let me know um, that, all that he's he's taught me, I can't let that go to waste. Mm. He's taught me a lot, and I can't let I cannot let that go to waste. And this is why, like, I don't I don't listen. I'm I'm the funnest person out there. I'm not perfect. Sure, I'm a holy roller, but I'm not perfect. I still live my life, you know. Bless you. I I, I still live my life in, in in sinful ways. Lord knows I'm a I'm a sinner, but at the same time, like, I I, I just know that. I'm impacting people when I don't drink. They be like, damn, you don't drink. I'm trying. How you do that? Mm. Did, I didn't realize how much of a whole alcohol and weed, and that's not a problem if that's your vice, but I'm an, I'm an, I'm an addictive personality. Mm. Everything I do, I go hard at. Like, mm. you know what I mean? It might not work for some, because some people don't have that, but like when I'm in the gym, I, I bust down at the gym. When I'm, when I'm working, I go in on work where the point where I'm tired, stepping in yeah, anywhere. Right. So, 
for me, I had to know, like, you know your limits. I have to know my limits. I have to know myself. And I sat with myself and I realized, damn, I'm trying, I'm just trying to numb something. I'm trying to numb something and I had to sit with it sober, like, damn, what am I trying to numb? And then I realized all the traumas that I faced. I realized all the stuff, like being in the industry so young at 19 and having a deal, losing it, all my money going into a career. Mm. It didn't love me back. Mm. The career, everything. I lost everything, and I, but I got it back. Once I gave it up, excuse me, but I I I, I got it back. Right, right. And so, but that, that's only that's only. See, some people can't understand that, but that's only because I had an encounter. I had a guy found me when I was when I was when my friend died, and I was on the floor, tired of my own shit. Mm. I was tired of myself. I'm like. Yo, you know you deserve way better than that. You almost had it. You sitting with Jay Z, Beyonce. They telling you you're not gonna trip off this money when you making ten million dollars a year. Why are you tripping on that? And I'm not believing it because I'm not dealing with the shit that I should have been dealing with sober. And how old mm. were you when you got your first deal? Uh, I was nineteen. I was nineteen yeah, years that's, old. That's a lot for many. Yeah, I was 19 years old. I was fresh out. I was still in college, like still trying to like do the nursing thing and like do everything. And um, that was a that was that was awesome. I, this is at the time where I did like 106 and Park and BET Hip Hop Cipher. I was like in the limos, like reading, reading, got a test to study for online, yeah, and yeah. that was already like ups and downs there because I I made it, but I barely made it. Like you feel me? Like I barely made it. I, it was about to be Kanye West uh, uh, dropout, yeah. college dropout. <laughs> um, but I, I I seen it through and it wasn't easy. Right now I'm not an active nurse because my career and then the acting is doing so well. But like you know, if I ever need to fall back, now I'm doing an administration look at the, look side at the of light it. Light flex, like you know, my acting doing so well. But I could be a nurse when I, you know what I mean. One day if she I feel like shit, if sure. I get bored I can you know, you see the, say some lives. It's just and, small nuances that you know, you know, you know acting. 